What's up everybody, 32 Icon here. I hope that you guys are doing well. I'm doing well myself. Please go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already in good faith that I'll continue bringing you great content. So today I wanna to talk to you about how I started carrying one in a chamber. So this gun for safety purposes is uh, unloaded and the magazine is over here. I don't even have the magazine in there. Um, but this is a MMP9 1.0 full size. And this was the very first gun that I purchased. This, I probably had this about, I don't know, over a year and a half now. It has about 4,000 rounds through it. This is my baby. I love it. When I purchased it, I wanted something that was going to help me even the playing field against evil and also be able to go to the range and plank a little bit if I wanted to or enter a couple of uh, still plate competitions, which I've only done like one or two, but it was pretty fun. But anyway, so this is what I ended up purchasing. And when deciding to carry one in the chamber, I watched a lot of videos and I said, well, you know, I'm a newbie. I don't know if it's, if I can carry one in the chamber. I don't know if that's for more experienced people. But then I started watching active self-protection and you would see all these videos, real life videos where people were being attacked, walking their dogs, going to the bank, um, getting into their cars, having dinner, literally eating and having dinner. And rarely was there time to rack it and get one in the chamber and then go into battle. Usually it had to be ready or um, the bad guys had to jump on you. So, you know, <laughs> in real life, crime doesn't knock on the door and say, hey, we'll be there in three seconds and three, two, one. It just, it just happens. You have to be ready. So, so I said, okay, I'm going to carry um, in condition one. I'm definitely going to you know, make sure that I'm ready if, if that ever happens. And um, I'm going to watch some videos and help myself prepare. So that's what I did. I didn't immediately put one in the chamber. What I did was I carried this gun around and my holster empty. I just put it on my hip. I wanted to be careful just carrying a gun. I've never done that before. I was a newbie and that was, that was eye opening for me. Then I moved on to loading the magazine and just carrying it loaded and that's what I did for the longest I just loaded the magazine I didn't chamber around I just left it loaded and I put it in the um holster and I put it on my hip and I think I did that for about four months and in that four months I will go outside and I would condition my mind to say okay listen Liv you know if I ever have to use this I don't plan on it but if I ever have to use this Rack it first, rack it first, rack it first, rack it first. And I will actually practice in the home before I will leave. Okay, draw a rack, draw a rack, draw a rack. And I realized, I was like, okay, that is, that's a lot. You know, that's, I have to make sure that I'm ready. And that extra two seconds that it took or so to rack the slide or one second, whatever it was, that was costly. So I said, um, I said, okay, I got to move into carrying one in the chamber. So what I did was, and once I was comfortable drawing it and racking it, then I started carrying one in the chamber, but I wouldn't go outside. <laughs> so I just would come home. I will practice one in the chamber. Um, excuse me, I would practice putting the magazine in, racking it, putting it in my holster and carrying it around with me for the rest of the day like that. I'm like, Liv, you got one in the chamber. Liv, you got one in the chamber. And eventually, I elevated to real defensive rounds when I was practicing one in the chamber. But I used my little, you know, those little um, bullets. I forgot what they're called. But they're not, obviously, they're not real. But um, I bought a couple of packs of those and, and um, I played around with it in the house to make sure I was comfortable with it. And then I put the, um, the real self-defense rounds in it. And I would rack it and I would walk around like that for the longest. And so once I got used to that, then I would, then I eventually elevated to going outside and having one in the chamber. And then it became second nature for me, but it was a process. I didn't just wake up one day and realize, okay, I need one in the chamber. I practice it. I, again, I, um, just carried it empty. Then I elevated it to carrying with a magazine in and practicing around the house and um, practicing racking it after I drew my pistol. And then I elevated that to um, putting the magazine in 
and having one in the chamber walking around the house like that for a few months. And then I was able and comfortable enough to go outside. But it took a while to get there. I didn't just get there. It, it took some time. But I think that is the only way to carry. I mean, you have to be ready. You have to have one in the chamber. Oops, my little, uh, my little thing is coming off here. But you absolutely have to have one in the chamber and be ready to go. Because if not, you're going to be surly mistaken if you think that pulling it, pulling out your gun, racking it is going to give you enough time. And honestly, it, you know what? It may. It may give you enough time. But I don't want to chance it. I don't want to have to use my gun and then I'm fumbling with it. I got a racket. And then by that time he's charging to me and something happens. I just want to be able to pull it and use it if needed. But it's a process. And I watched a lot of, excuse me, I watched a lot of credible videos that showed me exactly how to do it and what to do. And I think the videos help, but it is a process. So if you're thinking about carrying one in the chamber, you can do it. It is a process, but personally, I think it's the only way to carry, especially nowadays. People are crazy. You just never know when you're going to, you know, face evil. And even if it's not people, there are a lot of people out here that have stray dogs and have dogs that aren't on chains and they're pretty vicious. And, you know, I'm not advocating, I'm not advocating killing any animal. What I'm saying is that there are a lot of vicious dogs out here. In fact, my father... <laughs> My father lives next to a neighbor who has a pit bull and that pit bull is never on a chain and it's always, it's, it's fenced in. But sometimes when you go visit, you have to go through that fence and he is crazy. And we've, you know, we've gotten on the owners next door and say, Hey, your dog is out of control. What if that dog jumps that fence? You know? And I'm just saying you have to have protection. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to offend anyone and I'm, I'm trying to be careful about how I say it, but at the end of the day, if your life is on the line and you need to pull that gun against something or someone, then that's just the way it is. But I think condition one will, um, will probably be the best bet. Okay. So I hope that helps someone. That's just how I got started to carrying one in the chamber. And, um, you know, feel free to tell me your story. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks. Peace.